okay, I have another story. You know, sometime, at some point in time, I'm gonna write all of these out, but it's a lot of work writing out stories and, and it takes a particular kind of um, expertise. And so I'm gonna just tell them to start because I wanna share them. Now, bed bugs. You're probably gonna not like this story. Um, one of the fellows that I was with, he had just said to me the other day, oh, tell the story about the bed bugs. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, I don't think others are gonna find it as funny as what you and I are gonna find it. But anyways, here's the story. Now let me, first of all, they'll give a little bit of context. Bed bugs are really normal and really common in a lot of the places where I go. Uh, so much so that I've gotten fairly used to them. They, they don't really freak me out. I don't know. I'm just really used to waking up with some bed bug bites on a regular basis. Uh, I would never not do ministry because of bed bugs. Um, at, in one place, in fact, maybe I'll tell this in another bit of a story, but in one place, we had actually prayed that there would be no bed bugs, and then there were no bed bugs the next time I went. That was quite amazing. There had actually been hundreds of bed bugs in that place, and then the Lord just had us take authority and, and pray against these bed bugs. So the bed bugs have been a bit of a journey. I had never really encountered bed bugs before I started the ministry work. But now, you know, a number of years in, and and they're not really a big deal to me. I'll go back to homes where I know there are bed bugs and whatever. I'd rather be with the people and then worry about bed bugs. But in the spring of this year, so Canadian spring, so it must have been, it would have been April or May of this year, I was with two other fellows the three of us had been traveling for a number of weeks to all of the different homes and churches and conferences and ministry places that we were invited to. And we were going to then be in a rural village where actually I've been a lot of times, almost every single time I go to Uganda, this, this was in Uganda, uh, I end up in this one village area because it was one of the first places I went to and I go back there almost every time I'm in the country. Now I've so I've stayed there a lot. I've even stayed in this one pastor's home, oh, quite a few times. Never had any trouble with bed bugs before in that, at their home. They've never had them. So we head there, the three of us this time. Uh, the room that I normally would stay in there has, has always had, has had a, like a single, a single bed frame and then a bunk bed. Now I've always stayed on the single bed frame. So this time with three of us coming, uh, they took that single bed frame and they put it down into the adjoining room for me and then gave and then the two fellows took that room one of the fellows slept on the bottom bunk of the bunk bed and the other one uh, stayed on a mat on the floor so we all spent our first night and you know i had set up my mosquito net and i don't know what they had done actually i don't even remember or even know if i knew but Come the next morning, I asked one of them, well, how was your night? And he said, oh, it's terrible. We picked bugs off of us all night long. And I had stayed in this house quite a few times, right? So I was like, I was sort of dismissive in my mind. Oh, sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. Like, I was actually really snarky in my brain. Then, anyways, turns out both these fellows tell me, yeah, we were picking bugs off ourselves in the night. I was like, oh. So then what we did that day was we brought out their luggage or their, you know, their bags and then, oh, I was just, and then, and then also their, like each one had one or two bags, right? A bit of clothes and then sort of the personal, what we, you would call your personal thing that you always kind of keep on you when you travel, right? So we had brought, um, their bags out that day. I think we did this the very first day. I'm trying to think of maybe we did a second night and they had so much trouble again that we finally did this. I'm not quite remembering it. But anyways, Pastor and his wife had a big table outside that was the main table for sitting and eating at. So we had brought their luggage out and we began to pull it all apart to find the bed bugs, right? And get rid of them from in between clothes and around the edges of the zippers and in the seams of the bags and 
we even found some in the books that the one fellow had, I think. And it was there that I learned that baby bed bugs, you can't even hardly see them. They're the same color as my flesh. Oh my gosh, that, I, I don't think I needed to know that. And they're actually so small, you can hardly see them. So you could be carting bed bugs around and not even know it because, you know, I would have been looking for the, the mamas and the papas, not knowing what the babies looked like. So here we are picking all these bugs out of their luggage. And then the pastor, uh, oh yeah, and then the guys moved to the office, I think is what they did. There was another room with an extra, with a separate outside door, right? People normally didn't ever sleep in there. Uh, so the fellows moved over to that space. I don't remember, they had foamies or mattresses on the floor, but anyway, so they moved to that space and then the room where they had been was left empty for a night. I stayed in the same bed I was in. I was having no problem, right? I was in my nice space and I wasn't having any trouble at all. So that's what we did for the second night. And then we were moving location. We were going farther into another village for another two nights. And then we were going to be back again at this pastor's home. So the plan was that while we were gone, uh, the pastor was going to spray the room with whatever it was he had gotten to spray to get rid of the bed bugs, to basically fumigate the place. So this is all good. Now the guys, you know, we had been traveling quite a number of weeks already and, and along the way I'd had had trouble with bed bugs a few other places. And again, normally it's not a big deal, but somehow at that time, like whether it's because we just were wearing down, like <laughs> emotionally that, that we were, didn't have the same reserves to sort of deal with it or whatever, but it was, really it felt like an attack actually that week we get to the next place that we're going to the next day for the next two nights and turns out there were bed bugs there too now again somehow it was just this compounded effect that week so you know we look back now and we laugh about this right like it seems to me this crazy story and it just didn't end and there's more to it that i actually haven't even told you yet and somehow we just didn't have the energy for it or the emotional reserves or something. It just felt like we were under attack that week. So we get to this next place and there were bed bugs there too. And I don't know that we saw any of them, but, but I know what a bed bug bite looks like. And when you wake up with a number of those bites and, and they're sort of nasty bites, like they just itch forever, a different kind of an itch than a mosquito bite. But it's, and there's just a sense that you can't sleep completely all the way peacefully. At least that was the way it was that week for whatever reason. So we spent this next couple nights in this other family's home. Beautiful family. Oh my goodness, I've known those folks for years. Finally uh, got to stay with them. They were so honored to have us. We were so honored to be there. <laughs> and so this lovely sort of thing going on great to be in that community but then these it was like we still had the bed bugs so uh then we're back to the pastor's home where we had just been and so he had fumigated while we were gone the guys are still going to stay in the office where they had made up some space on the floor and i of course go back to my single bed my yeah, my, now he's, you know, my one simple frame bed under my mosquito net. And then the bed bugs are now with me. So whatever that fumigating did, I don't know, but all of a sudden this bed that I've slept on numerous times over the years now has bed bugs. And, oh my word, I was up so much that night. And of course, one of my biggest, I've learned over the years to not put my bags next to beds, to not leave my bags open, to not, again, just to eliminate the chance of carting bugs from one place to another, because that's actually my biggest fear. I don't really mind per se being bit by bed bugs, but I, I can't, oh my goodness, if I were to transport them from one place to another, that's a big concern of mine. So I have learned just to never 
leave my put my beds up against a bed frame or leave them open uh, in any way. I usually close them every night, the zippers and stuff, right? And I just never put them next to a bed. But that night, I'd seen a bed bug sitting on one of my clothes in my bag, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I kept waking up in the night to bed bugs, and I would, you know, use my Kleenex and get them out of my sleeping space. And then I saw one going through, of course, you know, I have this mosquito net, right? But I've learned bed bugs, mosquito nets don't keep bed bugs out. Uh, but what I saw that night was one of these bed bugs squeezing through one of the holes in my mosquito net. And I was like, very angry at this little thing. Like, what the heck are you doing? And oh my gosh, you can squeeze through my mosquito net? How, how is this possible? I mean, I know they can come up and around, but to go through the net, the mesh, I knew I had no recourse against them when I saw that. And there were just so many of them. There were clothes hanging up on the wall above my bed. And, I, and so, you know, often I'm laying in my bed and I shine my flashlight around the inside of the mosquito net to see if, I can, if there's any inside and if I need to get them. I sometimes do this with mosquitoes too, of course. So as I'm doing this and my flashlight's hitting, the light is hitting the clothes hanging on the wall and there's bed bugs on these clothes. And then to make it even worse, that night there was these moths or something. I can't even know what they were that would come to the light outside the door where I was staying. And then they would drop to the floor and the cats would get them. And so you wake up in the morning, there's wings everywhere, big wings. And these things would flap against the outside of my mosquito net. It was just this really bad week, actually, for bugs. I've never had a week this bad or this disconcerting or feeling bombarded actually it was the worst week and just feeling so tired with it all so I got by the time morning arrived that next day and we still had I think one night we only had one night left there but I said to everybody I said I'm, I'm not, I can't do it again I can't stay in that in that room and in fact I left my mosquito net there with the folks I just couldn't take it with me once I realized because I, I just couldn't take bed bugs with me and so now you know what I have a new mosquito net that I had bought at home that goes with me now. But So I said to them all, I'm sleeping in the office where the guys are sleeping. I just don't even care. And, and that's where I'm going to sleep tonight. So I made a bit of a space in that room as well. And we managed to get through the last night in that area and get back um, to the next place, to the city and then to the next place we were going. So this is our really funny story of bed bugs in a rural village in Uganda. Oh, I'm so glad it's a part of history and it's not normal all the time and it's actually not even normal all the time. I think I just said that twice. Anyways, I'll stop now. You're probably sufficiently um, disturbed. <laughs> you know, actually what's coming to my mind in that same place, I, a couple years back, I had had two folks who came with me on a three month trip to Uganda. And of course, part of what we do is we stay with people. Like actually, this is the main thing. We stay with people and we enter in and we receive and we enjoy fellowship with them and we are happy to sleep wherever they have us to sleep. And, and you know, it's the Luke 10 model, right? Go enter the town, find the house of peace, stay, uh, settle in, receive what they have for you, don't go looking around for something better, uh, because then you will be able, and you know, once you've become vulnerable and you've stayed with folks and enjoyed simple fellowship and received as well as bringing what you have to bring, but, but also vulnerable to receive, then you are free or able to then declare to heal and to declare the kingdom of God is at hand. So this is the manner that CCIM goes in. It, I think it's the manner, what's supposed to be the manner of the body of Christ, quite frankly. It, so it's a really key part of how we go and do what we do. So, of course, when people come with me, I have to teach them about this because it isn't a normal thing in missions to do it this way, actually. 
but this is what we do and it's the only way that we go. So I'm usually teaching it and so of course I was teaching it and modeling it to the and, and this is what we're doing this other time in Uganda but it was actually at this same home I'll never forget it the one fellow who was with we'd all had our sleeps we all got up in the morning and the one and the one fellow had all these bites all the way down him and of course with no mirrors he couldn't see he knew he'd had a, had a restless night and he'd gotten some bites but he didn't see how bad it was so here I am I'm leading the way this is what we're doing how we're gonna go and and you know it's one thing for me to do that to be in a place where I know I'm gonna be bit by bugs of some sort or you know a, a, some sort of difficulty like this or an uncomfortability like this and it's a whole other thing to bring other people into this very same thing right it's a whole different I don't even know what the word would be level of leadership to have to lead people into trouble or sort of into difficulty into bugs into discomfort and and a situation that they may not be used to or like oh my gosh so I'll never forget that night when one of our team guys he wakes up and he has bites everywhere and I was horrified <laughs> they did find the bug it was some sort of a small something I don't even know what it wasn't I never did see it but they they had found whatever this one thing that had been in his around his mattress that had bit him that night but uh, anyways always these interesting things that test our resolve and prove our love and and help us to lean on the Lord more and, and some of the things we have to navigate around so that's our I say our because of course Moses told me the other day he said you know tell the tell the bed bug story it'll be funny of course I'm not so sure it's funny but it is funny looking back it was just this craziness that ensued and of course I'm probably not even telling this story well enough right all of the picking through the clothes and through the books and everything spread out and then trying to spray the place which only sort of worked maybe and right this monumental sort of Her Herculean efforts and it really only shifted the problem from one room to the next from what we could tell or even brought them out of hiding where they'd been I have no idea but you know that home had never had bed bugs for years I'd stayed there and now they did I don't know if they still do or not I haven't been back since but you know I'll go back there again of course because they're friends and we'll show up and we'll visit and we'll stay and we'll fellowship and we'll enjoy each other bed bugs or no bed bugs bed bugs can't get in the way anyways that's one of my stories I don't think I'm gonna tell you any other bed bug stories because most people get pretty freaked out about these things so blessings on that note I hope you're not heading to bed as just after you've watched this uh, I should put a note watch this in the morning okay bless you I'll stop talking now bye